us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for another opportunity for us to listen to your word. Lord, we ask that you teach us by your spirit in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, we yield ourselves to you. We ask that you be the one teaching us and give us understanding. Let your word, O oh God, change our lives. Let your word that is quick, active, and powerful fulfill that which your word is meant to do in our lives, to bring us to that place of fulfillment of your will and your purpose for our lives. To you, our God, be all glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Our text is Psalm 100, verse 4, as we have been uh, looking at in this whole, whole month, we have declared it our month of thanksgiving, our month of thanksgiving, and we have been doing just that and also looking to the scripture. So I want us to open the Bible, open your Bible to Psalm 100. I want us to take the whole five verses of Psalm 100. Oh, indeed, this scripture is so rich. It is so loaded. If you have the understanding of this scripture, I believe that you will have greater victories in your life as a child of God. Um, so let's open our scripture and read. I will just uh, um, explain one line or one verse of that scripture for today, and then we will move on. But I will encourage you as a child of God, if you have given your life to Jesus, meditate upon this psalm until you receive the revelation of it. Because when you get the revelation of this psalm, joy will overflow in your life. Victory you will have in every situation. In the name of Jesus. Let us read it together. Psalm 100. Make a joyful shout to the Lord. All you lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Glory be to God. The Lord is good. We know that our God is good. In everything, give thanks. Because we know that our God is good. And when you give thanks to God, God takes over. Victory is guaranteed. So let it be in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. I told us this scripture is loaded. Just look at verse 3, for example. I've explained some other verses before. Verse 3, for example. It says, know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. So that first part reminds us why we should relax. Why we should rest in the hand of God. Because he has a responsibility as our maker. He has a responsibility as our creator. It is he who has made us. The song that I mentioned last uh, Sunday when we were here about the lady that I really appreciated God and found grace in a situation that would have been adverse situation. Her name is Marilyn Baker, Marilyn Baker. Of course, she's late now, so, and that's the song that we played at the start. He gives joy to the hopeless, peace to the weary, and he binds up the broken hearted. Glory be to God. Such people understood what it means to say, it is not me who created myself. I did not create myself. God created me. And the God who created you now tells you in the second part, listen to that second part. He says, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. This is where I want you to appreciate God. 
that God who created you says that you are his own and a sheep of his pasture. What does pasture mean? Pasture means the provision of God already that God has put you inside. The sheep of his pasture. The sheep of his care. He is the one who cares for you. God already has provided everything you need in life. When you come to thank him and appreciate the fact that he is your creator, he is your maker. Oh, isn't that a wonderful revelation? That the Bible says here that you and I, we are his people, God's people, God's children. And that God says we are the sheep of his pasture. His pasture, we are the people, the sheep of his provision. He already provides for us. We are dwelling in that provision. You know, pasture is a place where the sheep feeds. The green land with all the uh, grasses that the sheep needs to feed already provided by the shepherd. That is your dwelling place in God. Hallelujah. God will provide for you. His name is Jehovah Jireh. So go ahead and just keep thanking him for provision. In every situation, give God thanks. Glory be to God. So I ask you to meditate upon this word. Of course, you can then link this to, with this understanding, I believe you will understand Psalm 23 better now. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Because why? You are the sheep of his pasture. He already has provided that green land, that green the vegetation for you as his sheep, the whole provision that you need in life, your Father God Almighty has provided. That's why you have to keep thanking him. Glory be to God. We have established that thanking God brings us great blessing. Number one, we established that a thankful heart gets more blessing from God. Number two, that thanksgiving to God guarantees victory. Number three, that we have to thank God for good times and bad times. We are to thank God when we see manifestation of blessings and when we don't see it. We are to thank God in great breakthroughs, in breakthroughs and in adversities. We are to keep thanking God. Because thanksgiving is a potent weapon of faith that guarantees victory. Today, we want to very quickly focus on giving to God. Giving to God as an expression of thanksgiving. Giving to God as an expression of thanksgiving. And who else can we look for as an example or look at as an example than David, a man whom God said, he was a man after his own heart. So, you know, the story of David, how he was anointed to be king. So from the day he was anointed, in the sight of God, he was already king. But he took him many years before that provision of God, pronouncement of God came to manifestation. But David understood how to thank God. So if you follow that story, then you will realize that in First Chronicles, let's run through First Chronicles, I believe uh, chapter 10, there uh, Saul was defeated and Saul died. You go to chapter 11 um, and chapter 12, David was made king over Judah and David continued. But as soon as David was made king, David decided to do something. He decided to bring the ark of God that the Philistines had taken away back to uh, Israel. And so the entire Israel supported him and the ark was brought back. So in chapter 16, First Chronicles chapter 16, you see there how David thanked God when the ark was brought back. In fact, David so danced and praise God when the ark was brought back that his wife looked at him and said, look at how David was disgracing himself. And of course, David answered her that he will continue 
to dance more. If that type of dancing is what you call disgrace, there's no big man. Ah, imagine David was a king. He understood the power of thanksgiving, the victory in thanksgiving. So David thanked God, and he even composed a thanksgiving psalm. You see from verse 7 of uh, First Chronicles chapter 16, he said, On that day David first delivered this, this psalm into the hand of Asaph and his brethren to thank the Lord, to thank the Lord. Verse 8, he said, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing to him, sing psalms to him. Talk of all his wondrous works. And he continued, he continued. So, David rendered that great thanksgiving to God. After he had done that, the ark was brought to the place that David has built, the tent that David had built for the ark of God. And now see what David did. So I read from verse 1. Now it came to pass when David was dwelling in his house, that David said to Nathan, the prophet, See, now I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of the covenant of the Lord is under tent curtains. Then Nathan said to David, Do all that is in your heart, for God is with you. For God is with you. Another way of looking at that sentence is Nathan was telling David, it is the spirit of God that is leading you. God is with you. God is the one leading you. Do what is in your heart. Verse 3. But it happened that night that the word of God came to Nathan saying, go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, you shall not build me a house to dwell in. For I have not dwelt in a house since the time that I brought up Israel, even to this day, but have gone from ten to ten, and from one tabernacle to another. Six, wherever I have moved about with all Israel, have I ever spoken a word to any of the judges of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Pay attention to this. So, David did the thanksgiving with his mouth and all that. In fact, if you can read there, David also sent gifts to people. But beyond that, David said, what else can he do to show his gratitude to God? He said, ah, I will build a house for the ark of God. This ark from the time of Moses has been in tents. I live in a cozy house. I will build a house for the ark of God. And God said to David, I have never complained. I have never asked anybody. I didn't tell anybody, build me a house. But you, David, because you have a heart of gratitude, because you understand what it means to give to God as a means, as an expression of thanksgiving, you have decided to build me a house. Now, God answered David and said, don't build me a house. Don't. I'm the one that will build you a house. Because you have proposed in your heart to do this, I will build you a house. So let's read on. That's what verse 6 there says. It says, Wherever I have moved about with Israel, have I ever spoken a word to any of the judges of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people, saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? God said, I have never complained. Let me make a point here. All those who tell you, put so a seed to the man of God and God will bless you. Just be careful with those kind of people. God wants you to give to him by your own volition. God doesn't make a demand of any man to give to him. But God teaches us the principle of giving. Because when you give to God, and you must give because of God, as a child of God, as we will look quickly. When you give to God, God will enlarge you. God will repay you. 
So you should give to a man of God on that basis, your own volition, not because of seed. You should give to the poor of your own volition because of God, because God commands us to do so. You should give to the needy. You should help give. We don't see God physically to give. But when we give to fellow human beings who are in need, and we are giving to them because of God, then we are doing God's will. We are giving to God. And the Bible says he that gives to the poor lends to the Lord, and the Lord will repay him. Let's read further because of time. Verse 7. Now therefore, God, shall you say to my servant David, God says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the sheepfold, from following the sheep to be ruler over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you have gone and have cut off all your enemies from before you and have made you a name like the name of the great men who are on the earth. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more, nor shall the sons of wickedness oppress them anymore as previously. 10. Since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people in Israel, also I will subdue all your enemies. Furthermore, I tell you that the Lord will build you a house. Hallelujah. Can you hear that? Look at all the blessings that followed because David decided to give, to do something for God. This season of Remembering the birth of Jesus Christ, this season of thanksgiving, this season of joy, I implore you to do something for God. When you choose to do something for God, let it come from your heart and let it come from a heart of thanksgiving. Let it come from a heart of appreciation. When you do something for God, because of God, because you're grateful, because you're thankful, God is the one who decides how he repays you. That's why I tell you categorically, all those people who tell you, come and sow seed, put dollar, put naira, and you will get this and you will get that. Be very careful. The scripture is clear. Galatians 6 verse 7 teaches us how to sow. It says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that he will reap. Luke chapter 6, verse 38, commonly quoted, Give, and it shall be given to you. Not the one man tells you to give. The one you give, knowing that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Giving is a form of thanksgiving when you give it unto God. You can read the rest of the scripture all the way down to 17, and you see David's response. But God here, just to encapsulate this into bullet points, number one here you see that God said to David, I will build you a house. Number two, he said, because of you, and you have decided to give to me, I give you peace on all sides. No war, no, everybody around you, I subdue them before you. Number three, God went further to say he will cause his kingdom, his throne to be established forever, continually. He will give people to always be upon the throne of David. That's, you see, in verse 11, and it shall be when your days are fulfilled, when you must go to be with your fathers, that I will set up your seed after you, who will be of your sons, and I will establish his kingdom. Let me read 12. He shall build me a house, and I will establish his throne forever. Even when for that to say he will not take the kingdom away from his uh, sons, his uh, lineage, no matter what happens, and God has been faithful. And you also see here, God said uh, to David that he will live long and fulfill his days. You see, they say, and it shall be when your days are fulfilled, because David decided 
to give to God as a way of thanksgiving. Let's look very quickly at Matthew chapter 25 from verse 31 to 40. A reminder how we should give to God as an expression of thanksgiving. Matthew chapter 25 from verse 31. He said, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. 37, then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? 39, or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? 40, the last verse we want to read now. And the king will answer and say to them, as surely I say to you, in as much as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. You're not going to see God physically. You're going to see that needy man, that needy brother, that situation that needs help for you to give to God. That's how to give to God. Jesus said, I say to you, in as much as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. I want to implore you to make your thanksgiving complete this year, 2020. Think about what you are going to do for God. Look for that helpless man, that helpless woman, that child, that situation, whatever it may be. And do something because of God. When you do it, watch what God will do. This one is not man telling you, give to me. You, by the Spirit of God. Like David, say, God, I thank you. God doesn't need your food, doesn't need your money, doesn't need your anything from you. God needs your faith and your gratitude to him. And thanksgiving is a potent principle of faith. As you do that this season, the Almighty God rise on your behalf as he rose for David and blessed David and established him everlasting dynasty. The Almighty God do what you cannot imagine. As the scripture says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has in store, has ordained for those who love him. All glory be to Jesus. So we have to summarize. We have established that thanksgiving is a potent weapon of faith that guarantees victory, that a thankful heart gets more blessings from God, that we are to thank God in good times, and in bad times, when we see the manifestation and when we don't see, when we have breakthroughs and when there is adversities, we are to thank God. And finally, we are to also go further and express our thanksgiving through giving. Glory be to God. I want to encourage you to join the next teaching, which will be the last teaching of this thanksgiving. It will blow your mind. It will equip your life to live 
a life of thanksgiving to God for the rest of your life. Because as we have established, a thanksgiving heart, a heart of thanks giving gets more from God. I'm going to be speaking on thanksgiving equation. Thanksgiving equation. So make it a date next Sunday, the 27th, to wrap up this teaching and to round off the teaching session of the year 2020. The Almighty God bless you. Thank you for joining. I want to pray for everyone that is connected. Uh, in case you have not given your life to Jesus, know that Jesus welcomes you just as you are. So right now, tell him, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Forgive me my sins. I give my life to you. Almighty God, give me your Holy Spirit and forgive me. Help me by your spirit to live for you. Give unto me that eternal life. And when you come to take your people, let me be and go with you. Thank you, almighty God, in Jesus' mighty name. One of close, Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise, we give you glory. Thank you for your word that you have given to us. Holy Spirit, I pray for all these, your children. As they have heard your word, as they move by faith to obey you, Jesus, to give to that needy child, to help that needy man, to help and do one thing or the other, as your spirit will guide them. Heavenly Father, faithful God, move on their behalf. Thank you, our Father and our God. We are so grateful and thankful to you, you who have kept us to see this last but one Sunday of December 2020. Glory be to your holy name. Lord, we hand over our lives to you. We hand over everything that concerns us to you, and we thank you for everything. We thank you for victory over the year 2020, and we thank you for greater victory in the year 2021. To you, our God, we all glory. Oh, that person that has been struggling with a confusion in your in your life, there is something that is confusing. You have been asking for direction. You have been looking for a way out. The Almighty God carry you with his outstretched arm and bring you to that place of peace. The Spirit of God guide you and give you solution. Receive that breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, people of God. Thank you for joining.